So my name is Inês Pires da Silva. I'm a medical oncologist and a clinical researcher working at the Melanoma Institute of Australia and also Blacktown Hospital uh, in Sydney. And we developed this international collaboration where we studied a hundred, sorry, 310 patients with metastatic melanoma uh, treated with first line uh, ipilimumab combined with anti-PD-1. Uh, and what we wanted to do is to study the patterns of progression. So all patients progress with this combination treatment at first line, and also how would we manage those patients and the respective outcomes. And why did we decide to study that? Well, because we know that this first line treatment is what is associated with the highest overall survival compared to other treatment strategies. But it's not really clear what we can do to those patients uh, after progressing with this treatment. Um, and also, uh, we can see clinically that those patients are not the same. Uh, some patients progress only one side, some patients progress in multiple sites. So the first question was uh, trying to uh, identify patterns of progression. So we divided uh, our cohort in three main groups according to the type of progression. One is innate uh, progression or innate resistance. So when patients progress um, or had stable disease less than six months, so either progressive disease at first scan or stable disease for less than six months. Acquired resistance for those patients who had initial response uh, and then progressed afterwards, or for those patients with stable disease for more than six months and then progressed afterwards. And we also have a small subset of patients that we call pseudoprogression. So those patients that uh, they have initial progression, but then without changing any treatment or any management, they, they start responding. So those patients are not real progressors, but we also have those patients in this cohort. After identifying those patterns of progression, then we deemed the innate resistance, so the really problematic patients. We decided to look at patients who progressed within the first month and a half, patients that we, we called super progressors. So we deemed the innate progressors, so patients, had I mentioned, uh, at first scan, progressive disease, or stable disease for less than six months. Within those patients, we split into two groups, the super progressors and the others. And we tried to identify which clinical factors could uh, or would be associated with the super progressors, because those are the patients that are really, really a struggle in clinic and a challenge. So we've seen that um, patients with a primary melanoma and head and neck, and patients with lung metastasis at time of presentation, so before, before starting treatment, those two clinical factors have been associated with super progress. This is a clinical observation, so uh, of course we are going to try to address that question more in the lab, trying to understand the biology, but this is a clinical observation. So that's the big patterns of progression. But then we wanted to look more carefully to see if uh, patients, so within innate and resistance, so what was the proportion of patients who progressed in multiple organs or in a single organ? And it was interesting to see that in innate resistance patients, the majority, so 68%, they progressed in multiple organs and the opposite was seen uh, with acquired resistance. So the majority of patients progress, progress on a single organ in the acquired. So that's what's very interesting. And another observation is that when we look to patients who progressed only on one site of disease, the most common site of progression was brain. That's very, very important, knowing that the combination of ipilimumab and PD-1 is definitely the standard of care for those patients. So we have a problem here in our hands. So for those patients who progressed with EPPD-1, um, brain mats are a site of resistance for those who progress. Uh, so we have to think about different strategies. Then what we, we decide to uh, see how we are managing around the world. So this is international collaboration with different centers in Australia, Europe and United States. And even though there's no standard of like, no, there's no standard second line after EPPD1, uh, I was curious, to, we were curious to know what we were doing and what was the outcome associated. And we, div we basically divided patients into treated with local treatment only, systemic and local, 
and systemic treatments uh, only. I have only analyzed uh, patients who are treated with systemic treatment alone or in combination with local treatment, but I have just analyzed the systemic treatment outcomes. So I don't have here the local treatment, which is going to be in the paper, but just to summarize, and again, this, this data is a retrospective data, so it needs to be analyzed carefully, but just to highlight a few things. So treatment with BRAF and MEK inhibitors, so target therapy for BRAF mutant patients is an option. So we have good control of disease. We have a uh, good uh, progression-free survival and even overall survival for those patients. We challenge with the combination or even with just PD-1 for those patients who progressed off treatment. So some of those patients, they had epinevo first line, they had some response, but then they progressed when they were off treatment. So in those patients, we challenge with those treatments is an option. Good outcomes also with those. We have also a group with investi investigational drugs. is a, a mix of several new combinations, new drugs. We have some signal, but it's hard to understand from which drug. I just want to highlight that in this ASCO, we'll have nice data coming out. So we might have an answer for this data that we, we have here. Another important point is chemotherapy in this setting has no role. And there is no question about that. So that's the, the summary of these projects. I think what I want to highlight is, first, patients who progressed uh, after EPPD1, they're not all the same. So we have different patterns of progression and different patients with different patterns of progression, they might respond to different types of treatment. Innate resistance and super progressors is still a problem. And we have to pay attention to brain mats because even though they, they tend to respond well to the combination of EPPD1, for those who do not respond to that combination, brain is a problem and a site of uh, progression or even isolated site of progression. Chemotherapy, no role. Other strategies that are, are available might be an option, but definitely we need other treatments. And at ASCO this year, we might have some responses to that.